Uh, welcome to day 12. Uh, today's uh, theme is an attitude of gratitude. And the spiritual law is, it is a law of life that if we develop an attitude of gratitude, our happiness increases. So in the next uh, couple of uh, a lecture, uh, first lectures and the next couple of days, I'm going to be talking about some rather big, broad themes, themes that were central, however, to Sir John Templeton's uh, life, and uh, themes that uh, were so central and to his practice of spirituality that it's because of them that I think uh, we can see him as a, as a practical mystic, a kind of a saint of the, of the practical life, of everyday life. Words like gratitude and forgiveness, um, generosity and love, we will see, uh, really played a large role in his, uh, in his thinking and in this book that we're studying. Um, if, we, uh, we, we, if, if we ask ourselves about gratitude, of course, that's a big word, what is gratitude? I'll, I'll try in the next couple of minutes to say something about that. Um, but uh, uh, gratitude was central to Sir John's life, and we might think, well, that was a personal whim on his part, or perhaps he had an overly optimistic view of life. It, it does to some, to sometimes, and to some people, it may seem a bit, uh, um, a bit simple to constantly go about praising everything. And that's, in fact, a line from the book. Uh, Sir John said that one should constantly praise everything. And that can actually perhaps seem often to be a bit overly, overly optimistic, perhaps too generous. Um, but why uh, did Sir John think in this way? How is it that he could dare to bless every situation um, as filled, as he would say, with divine abundance? It's because uh, the central principle in his uh, mysticism is this notion of God life uh, radiating through all things, that, that all things uh, are filled with the, the, the divine. As he writes, and he's most eloquent when writing about uh, gratitude, gratitude represents a key to many of the highest, noblest, uh, and uh, most life-enhancing sacred emotions. A grateful heart grows increasingly humble and can, can become fearless through its recognition of universal divine presence. We begin to develop the sacred ecstasy of service as helpers in infinite creativity. And so these words themselves are, are beautifully uh, expressive of, uh, of his dedication to the notion of generosity. And I do believe that you can clearly hear how generosity has affected and shapes his, his spirituality. Um, but, you know, as we know, gratitude doesn't necessarily come very easily. It, it's a virtue uh, and it's not an attribute. It's not something we're born with. Uh, we don't, we're not born with a certain amount of gratitude or with the capacity just to constantly praise every situation. And since it's not, not an attribute or a, a characteristic of just being human, it's a virtue. And virtues have to be practiced. They have to be exercised. They have to be used in order for us to develop them. Um, and... Uh, so, but one may ask, well, you know, I'm happy, I'm, grat I'm grateful when something nice happens to me. But for Sir John, it needed to be more systematic than that. And so, uh, Sir John Templeton suggests what he calls the good things in life exercise, um, which is the simple practice of being thankful every day for three things in our lives. We can even do that right now. Let's, let's take a moment and... Uh, think of at least three things for which we're grateful. One, two, three. And I think it's possible for all of us to find three things for which we're grateful. Now, gratitude doesn't just begin when something really great happens in our lives. Oh, I'm really grateful because I won or because I achieved or because I got or because I am. Gratitude can begin with the smallest of everyday details. It can begin with gratitude for something as simple as this morning, for instance, I was staying in a hotel and um, the oatmeal that I ate for breakfast was really well done. I mean, it was the best oatmeal I've had in a long time. 
And I was so happy with the oatmeal that I even said to the to the server, oh, that was really great oatmeal. Tell tell the cook it was great. And uh, I, maybe that was kind of, you know, over the top. But she said, oh, well, thank you. I'll tell her. And then before I left, she came out and she looked at me with a big smile and she said, the cook was really happy to hear that you liked her oatmeal. So I don't know. Those are strangers. I don't know these people, but we were all smiling. Um, and I think that the idea then behind gratitude is that by showing our gratitude towards others and towards life itself, it increases our own happiness. And the, one could see that in a selfish way as being grateful so that you can feel better. And that's, if that's where we want to start, that's also a good place to start. But also, gratitude is really a form of appreciation. It shows our appreciation to others for all of the work and effort that they put into their everyday lives, performing their duties, which, which of course, without their contribution to life, and without their uh, competence, our lives would be immeasurably more difficult. Just think of three things that weren't functioning, let's say, in this city here where I am right now. Let's just say that this morning the roads were all blocked or there was no—that people didn't bother to keep the power going. Uh, simple things like that or that no one showed up to cook at the restaurant. It would be difficult to talk to you on a completely empty stomach. All right, so um, you still, you might say that that's nice, that's fine. Uh, gratitude, it's okay for someone to have that as a kind of a personal, personal whim. But, you know, there really is a science of gratitude, and I know that might sound like a contradiction in terms if you haven't heard of it before, but there is a whole new field in psychology uh, that start, that's developed over the last 20 to 30 years. It's known as positive psychology. And positive psychology's founders include uh, uh, eminent psychologists such as um, uh, Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania and Barbara Fredrickson at the University of North Carolina. And they have, div they have identified uh, a list of key positive emotions that if we cultivate, we will increase our happiness and the happiness of others. And they actually have conducted multiple experiments and, situ and created situations in which the empirical evidence is clear that gratitude is really good for you. Gratitude is all an all-around good remedy for many of the, uh, the psychological ills of life. And so, uh, for instance, uh, positive psychologist Martin Seligman, was he reading Sir John? Or perhaps Sir John was reading Martin Seligman. Because it's clear when you read uh, this book that uh, Sir John was very, uh, very up to date in many, many areas of research. Um, and so positive psychologist Martin Seligman says that the practice of gratitude, and here he gives the how to practice it, it very concrete. Every night, write down three things that went well for you that day and also note why they went well. So every night before we sleep, we should write down three things that went well for us that day, three things for which we're grateful. And as, uh, as uh, Dr. Seligman uh, notes, and you can see uh, videos with him on the internet explaining this, for instance, uh, uh, in a YouTube video to the Dalai Lama, he, he says that uh, this, grat this practice of gratitude, the, the writing down three things every day, is an addictive practice that will make you happier. He gives a list now. It will make you happier. It will give you higher life satisfaction. Uh, it can even lower depression. And this is not just a, a kind of a personal opinion, as he notes, at all of these benefits uh, can be, are measurable, and they show up as clear benefits of the gratitude practice after six months in random, quote, random uh, assignment placebo-controlled tests. So if, if it isn't the case that all of the religious teachers of history who have recommended generosity to us is not enough of a motivation to practice something as simple as being generous for three things in our lives, we can start with one and then we can build up to two. Excuse, uh, uh, for, for being gratitude, for having gratitude, excuse me, um, uh, then, uh, then certainly hearing about uh, the results of positive psychology can also uh, be a benefit to 
uh, can be a motivation to practice gratitude. Uh, Seligman and uh, some of his colleagues, uh, Parks and Steen, in a very important article, A Balanced Psychology in a Full Life, write, positive emotions are increased and the pleasant life is promoted by exercises that increase gratitude.